He was so passionate, I guess, about everything. He was passionate and curious, and he would just take that passion and apply it to whatever was in front of them. You know, whether it was editing or writing or teaching or music, it was just that passion that was just kind of all-consuming with him. He had a law degree, but he never practiced law, but he would easily, willingly, anytime, have a discussion about any philosophical, legal, ethical question out of just sheer love of looking at what's right and what's wrong in the world. Tom had kind of a beautiful childlike enthusiasm for things. He never lost kind of a sense of fascination and joy and glee in things, including the music. Tom would casually mention his encounters with famous musicians like B.B. King or Keith Richards. And it would seem, you know, sometimes like a bit of name dropping. But then later we'd find out that these weren't just encounters, but these were real relationships that Tom had with these, these people. He had true friendships with so many well-known celebrities. But he was always just so casual and humble about it. It would take a while to understand the depth of his relationships. But when he was doing journalism, he was a ethical, thorough reporter. He believed in the standards of journalism, no matter what kind you're doing, and that showed in his work. His, his values were to not settle. He wanted to be the very best that he could as a writer, as a musician, as an educator. And he poured his heart and soul into being just that. As a mentor, perhaps that's where I would put him at the top in terms of the list of what made him extraordinary. He put his metaphorical arm around his students and sometimes when it was necessary, his actual around, arm around his students. Nothing stopped when the bell rang. He was there for his students. He loved to see his students succeed. If a student was struggling and thought they were gonna fail, he loved to see them pass and like overcome whatever kind of challenge they were going through. He loved to see students he had pushed really hard go on to have great careers and find fulfillment. I think that was why he loved teaching so much really, was he liked to see people uh, just doing great. He was one of those people, a rare person, who truly and honestly rejoices in other people's successes. His joy at that was pure and genuine. He didn't need to do that. He had plenty of success on his own, but he, he wanted other people to succeed as well. His priorities were not about money, about possessions. It was about the things in life that, that can't be bought, that they just, through great luck and great fortune, they come our way. He would want to be remembered as a really great dad and husband. His family was everything to him. He couldn't talk enough about them. So I, I, I think that he already knew who he was in terms of the music industry or something like that. To him, that wasn't news. That wasn't as much fun or in, as important as uh, his family. I think he'd be really happy to know just how much he's still living on in me, Joe, Dan, and my mom. Even though he's gone in his like physical form, his teachings really live on. And especially just by being a professor for so long, he was able to really make an impact to like a really broad set of people in a really positive way. I guess I could say that so many students came away aspiring to be another Tom. And, and so many of them, you know, really nailed it and are out there doing wonderful things because of Tom. And people know that. People know that. Yeah, he, was a, he was really a special person.